right, next we have a panel discussion about the festive season which is coming up. Now, everyone is excited and you have questions, you have ideas, they have ideas. They'll be sharing it. The topic for the panel discussion is the season of opportunity strategies for marketing during India's festivals. The session will be chaired by Althea Vandervin, Director of South Ad Sales. True caller. Please put your hands together for her. The panelists, I'll request one by one, everyone to step on stage. Gunidhi Singh Sarin, VP Marketing, Head Digital Works. Jiten Mahendra, VP Marketing, BTC, Baiju's Tuition Center. Saibal Biswas, Head of Marketing Partnerships and PR Medibuddy. Nikhil Mayane, Principal Partner, Content Plus Mindshare. Wake up a little bit and welcome the panelists here. Althea, thank, thank you so much, and please, all over to you. Thank you. So while we are putting um, names to faces, you kind of missed that boat now, but yeah, thank you everyone for joining us today. It's a, it's a pleasure being here for a physical event after really, really long. Um, appreciate the turnout, appreciate you all staying awake after lunch could be difficult. Um, Thank you, E4M, for really bringing us together and bringing us from an online to an offline environment. It's uh, long overdue and it's most welcome. Um, my esteemed panelists, thank you. It's been lovely getting to know you all uh, over these past few days, and I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Um, and yeah, let's get down to business. <laughs> so um, I'd, I'd like to set a little context to the theme today, uh, our topic for today, uh, in my mind, uh, but uh, my experts here will kind of dive into it a little bit more, and uh, I'm just here to look pretty and add to this p panel, but uh, they're going to do the hard work, so um, let's, let's get to it. So um, two parts to it. I'm looking at the performance that this festive season really brings to the table and the contribution to business. And uh, the key focus that this entire festive, uh, this season again kind of looks at. And uh, for me, that's the end consumer. So the best of the season really is upon us. And um, there's so much, like to, to Indians, it's more than just there's, more to the ta uh, there's a lot on the table, literally and figuratively. Um, and, you know, uh, it's not just about celebration. It's also an auspicious time to buy and sell products. I'm sure everyone's looking forward to those wonderful sales that you can really mileage. And it's all on live right now. So after this session, you all can get shopping. Um, so as per media reports, there are... You know, the, this time accounts for, you know, an estimated of 30 to 45 percent of company annual sales. And uh, this is expected to ac actually ex cross pre-pandemic levels. Um, something that we're all looking forward to. I'm, I'm sure marketeers and agency folk too. Um, targets, budgets, everything being met and end consumers being really happy about it. So I was reading a report the other day that uh, talks about how the first week of this upcoming festival is likely to witness 24% boom in the online sales. And that's incredible. I mean, give us all credit. We participate in this, right? We shop. And if we don't shop, who's going to win? Um, even on our platform, we actually find um, how pat we see how patterns of consumption and behaviors change as well. And uh, this season comes around where transactional engagement goes up also at about, you know, approximately 50%. Now, if you can see shifts of patterns like this, there's really something to take a deep dive and really a season to kind of, you know, build in and optimize. Um, so the, the second part of it is I want to talk about how brands are really, really getting to the heart of things. Uh, a lot of our e com players, our leading e-com players, as a matter of fact, are rolling out with such engaged sales. Uh, there's a, they're promoting the, the, the plethora of, of, of opportunities and options that are there, promoting upgrades and, uh, you know, wardrobe refreshes, makeovers, presenting the biggest marketplace. I mean, that's incredible. The, the kind of platforms they're bringing together, all to promote affordability, choice, and regionalization. Um, a special call out to actually how they're enabling um, 
the end user to meet their needs, uh, fulfilling their purchase needs. Merchants to sell and build their businesses. I mean, that's a really important part. And let's not forget the job opportunities they are creating with the workforce that's making all these connections. So, I mean, this leads me to my, to the theme today, where it's a season of opportunity, strategies for marketing during India's festivals. I mean, it's, it's such a statement and it's so broad, you can, you can really, really build on, on ideas, innovations, and we don't, we need more than an hour to kind of really have this conversation. But uh, we have only an hour, so let's get into that. So my panelists today have come with a rich and a mixed bag of experience, and we are going to dive back, dive into that. They're going to help us break down and dive into what 2022 festive seasons has in store for us. So my first question to all of us here um, is about consumer sentiments and expectations from the upcoming festive season. Post a COVID scenario and uh, versus an inflationary environment, how are you as marketeers or media persons seeing current sentiments and working with it? Hi, uh, thank you for having me over. My name is Guniti Sareen and I belong to a company called Head Digital Works. Uh, you would have heard of the brand uh, A to 3. I hope you have. <laughs> Great, I see, I see some hands there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so as far as you know, this festive season is concerned, uh, I don't think there could be a better time for, for marketeers as well as sales guys, right? Uh, after a gap of about two years or so, where people are going to actually, we are going to actually witness a festive season where people will not be restricted as far as their movements are concerned. They'll not be paranoid also, right? They were still there last year, but yeah, this year is, is like completely free of all that. Um, there will be a lot of avenues for, for the consumers to spend uh, money. Uh, we accord a lot of, a lot of respect uh, to our festivals, to our traditions, and, and you know, whether it's expression of self-love uh, during festivals, or or it's about gifting somebody the you know some gift to to our to your near and dear ones, or it could be for your home as well, right? Uh, so people are going to spend money this time, and 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 um, and it's considered to be good. It's considered to be auspicious as well. Uh, we will kind of see like a revenge kind of, kind of revenge spending, right? Um, I was reading a reading a lot of surveys. You know, some survey said you know 50% of people will will spend more, 28%. I think it was by the Red Sea or some, something like that. But bottom line is, as people will spend more, so yeah. Uh, and like I was talking about a lot of avenues uh, for people to spend on, we've already started seeing a whole lot of you know, sales, uh, offers. Today I was, I was reading Times of India here in the Bangalore edition. Uh, there were two, two or three jackets of offers and stuff like that. Uh, so customers are like kind of spoiled, spoiled for choice. Uh, having said that, they'll obviously not just dive into the first offer that they get. Uh, the one who gives the better value uh, to them, as well as pre and after sales service support. Uh, I think that would be the key uh, to kind of, you know, fetch that kind of share from, from the customers. If I were to talk about gaming per se, uh, which, which is the sector that I belong to, uh, online gaming, um, you know, it doesn't really fit naturally in, in, the, in the customer scheme of things when it comes to festivals. They, of course, they need offline and they want to basically create some fun moments together. Uh, but see, how do we blend in? Um, alter that behavior because, you know, at the end of the day, marketing is not just about meeting the needs and demands of the customers. It's about altering the customer behavior as well. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm very, very optimistic, upbeat about this, this upcoming festive season. We will be looking at, you know, from, from as far as A to 3 is concerned, uh, we will be looking at a variety of offers and, and product features for our customers to kind of come in and play uh, with their extended family of about four crore people that we have on our platform. Fantastic. I mean, that's a positive note to kind of kick this off. We've uh, set the bar. <laughs> Everyone's looking forward to, an, to a really, really good season. Over to you, Mr. Saibal. Hey, hi. I am Saibal Biswas. I sort of represent Medibuddy. Uh, we are the largest online healthcare platform in India. Uh, for us, I think 
if I go by my colleague's uh, sentiment here, I also completely echo his thoughts. Like last two years uh, has had been an yeah, had been those years where people had concerns on the back of their mind. They were not sure or they were uncertain about the future. I think what I see uh, when I read the different research reports or even when I look at some of the online sales which is already happening and it started to happen uh, and especially the build up to it, I see a lot of positivity this time and I would probably relate it to that uncertainty going off and people really now shopping back with a vengeance. Uh, they want to spend pamper themselves and I do see uh, that resulting in both the purchases of uh, discretionary items as well as non-discretionary items all going up. Uh, a few interesting uh, things which uh, probably uh, happens is, uh, and if I were to really split the consumer into a male and a female audience, I do see uh, basis also the past experiences that mostly the men audiences here have already pre-decided what big item or what are the items they want to buy this festive season. Women's, uh, women are more impulsive. Uh, they can be influenced by ads more at the end of the day to sort of shop on impulse basis purchase. And I see that already happening in, in some of the platforms which have already gone on sales. Uh, Coming specifically to the industry where I work and Medibody as a company, I'm currently in the healthcare, so we currently operate in the healthcare sector. So while directly we don't see a peak on the overall uh, sales going up during festive season because end of the day, healthcare is a need-based service, uh, at least most part of it where, uh, and, and this is something which no one willingly wants to consult a doctor or order medicine or take a surgery in the worst case, God forbid. Uh, only when they have a need, they do it. But interestingly, uh, when we look at the data, and we end of the day are a data-based company, consumer-centric data-based company, I see very interesting trends which I may share with you. Uh, as a build-up to the festive season, I'm sure, uh, and you will relate to it, most people want to look at their very best. So what do we see on the platform? We see the online consultation for Dharma, which is skincare related uh, queries or requests of consultations or consultations really going up. Similarly, for weight management, people may want to look more fit or they may want to sort of look their very best during festive seasons. Uh, so these are two, two interesting observations I thought I would like to share. Uh, having said that, uh, I think uh, festive season also provides an opportunity for us uh, who are in the online healthcare space to create that visibility or top of the mind awareness that uh, there is an option to sort of use online healthcare because they are also shopping and their digital footprint increases. Uh, for brands like us, we also use it as an opportunity to sort of create top of the mind recall for those consumers who are shopping online. And, and given the positive sentiments, uh, while, uh, while uh, healthcare is not something which consumers will intuitively want to consult, but as some of the disciplines like dermatology, uh, weight management, and even for that matter, diabetes related queries, we see peaking, and those are opportunities. And also it is also opportunity for us to use the digital uh, presence of the consumers to also build top of the mind share for this, so that when they need it, they know that we are there 24 by seven to support in all their healthcare needs. Fantastic, so that it's amazing what data can tell you, right? Um, I would never have thought this, but it makes complete sense. I mean, I wanna look good, I wanna lose weight, and I've had too many sweets, so how do I cure that quicker? Uh, thank you for that. Over to you, Jitin. So hi, hi everyone. So I think adding to the point which my uh, fellow colleagues have made, see, I think festive, um, it brings in a buoyancy, not only in the environment, but also in the mind of the consumer. And the energy which it generates, that what would seem like an impulsive decision becomes a normal scenario. You take a call off, you know, right from painting the house to buying a wardrobe, and it's an extended 
conversation. So your consumption is not a personal consumption, but it actually becomes an extended consumption. And that's where the bucket size, your average bill value, everything really uh, goes up. Now, uh, the point being that with COVID uh, last two years, so definitely there is going to be a, a major a boost in terms of the revenge shopping, what we are calling. People will really come out and shop and people really want to celebrate it. Also, festive is not a marketing created event. It is a, it's, it's already there, it's a life event. So we remember the Diwali which we celebrated five years back or a puja four years back. So this is an event and it's a core memory. So it's not something where the marketeer, so when I look at the festive, I think marketers have two opportunities. One, to build the brand because there is a lot of emotional conversation which can happen in the festival because the consumer is tuned to it. And at the same time, because there is a buoyancy, you can push in and increase your offtake and by giving consumer promotions. So this is a very good opportunity um, from a brand point of view that you interact uh, and you connect with the consumer at an emotional level. And obviously there is a requirement from the consumer. So you play and each category uh, will have a different uh, rule or a sign to play. The other thing is that Tier 2, Tier 3 will play a very, very important role because that's where there is a, a, a fixed buying pattern. So if you see over the years, just before the COVID, you know that a certain market spikes up during a Pujo, it gets spiked up during Dashera, Diwali. So people want to buy uh, during that time. Unlike Metro where buying becomes a, a normal scenario, but this time because of COVID, I think even in Metro people will be looking forward and eagerly uh, trying to consume more. So I am uh, pretty sure that this festive, it will be extremely bullish and brands will really encash on this whole opportunity. Yeah, thanks. So yeah, just playing on that point, I think tier two, tier three have really, really brought in game this year. And uh, the affordability that brands are kind of extending is what's making it also possible. Okay, as the, as, the, as the agency, I am cautiously optimistic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, because either way, I can be wrong. Yeah, so, uh, okay, so, so we, we help brands sell biscuits to very expensive cars, right? Uh, and we're seeing, uh, I w we're cautiously optimistic for a reason. I, I think across the strata, we're seeing different kinds of intent. Yeah, uh, it's interesting what I'm hearing everybody say. Uh, Beauty is not for everybody yeah, because I can't afford it. Yeah, so you know, uh, and I and that therefore we are cautious, cautiously optimistic. I think I agree with uh, Jitain specifically. We are looking at tier two, tier three. We think that's going to explode. Yeah, I, I think they. I, I also like what he said. Right, this is not a marketing created event. Right, it's a core memory, and therefore we can capitalize on it, and we should capitalize on it, but we are cautiously optimistic. I'll speak for sales as well. <laughs> but yeah, I think um, the users are really communicating to brands and telling everyone what they want. Um, after two years of a lockdown and restriction, people have realized so many things. So there's, there's really innovation and there's really opportunity that's out there. So let's talk about the most pending question really about ad spend, right? So um, 2022 was was set to be and looked forward to be quite a revival year. Um, we are talking about vengeance returns and, and it's uh, going across categories. Like everyone's really coming out of those little holes that they were in and kind of going after it. Um, so how are your advertising tra uh, budgets uh, trending for this year? And how, what has been the thought backing it? Yeah, uh, so one interesting side that I picked up was, you know, listen to customers. So customers are saying that I want to look good. Uh, there's weight management or you know, I want to look my best during festive season. Uh, listening to customers and, and hence paying attention to what's happening around you, right? Uh, what we've been witnessing as far as gaming industry is concerned is, is basically we've seen a solid growth over the last couple of years. And it's not really coming down because we thought that after lockdown, et cetera, it will come down. No, that's not happening. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and hence, Gaming is, is actually now becoming a very popular form of entertainment and stress buster. Um, so we were looking at these growths and we said, you know, we definitely need to build a brand, right? And, and this year we, we actually roped in uh, Shah Rukh Khan as our brand ambassador. Uh, we ran a very high decibel campaign with him. Uh, he truly represents, you know, what our brand or what our platform stands for. 
uh, a genuine platform for, for basically, you know, these self-made champions who want to come and showcase their skills. Um, we, we actually ran this, this campaign pre-IPL as, well as, as well as during IPL. Uh, we saw some very solid movement as far as our brand indicators are concerned. Um, and a very good uplift from, from, from the non-metro, non-tier one towns as well. So, so they were really responding to our, our advertisements, to our, to our engagement, to the engagement overall, even on digital world. Yeah. <clears throat> so looking at that success and as a run up to the festive season, we decided again to, to you know, follow up that campaign with, with a very recently launched campaign that we did about three weeks back. Uh, we wanted to start early as far as this festive season is concerned, not really wait when everyone else is also kind of uh, participating in that, uh, if I would, would say chaos per se. <laughs> but yeah, um, so yeah, we wanted to reinforce the same message of, you know, chalo saath khele, let's play together. Um, and overall, you know, kind of still talk about our brand strength at the same time. Again, a very good response in the first three weeks that we've seen. Um, so yes, uh, if I were to look at this festive season coupled with the upcoming sports calendar, it definitely gives us a lot of opportunity to kind of reach out to our customers in a very meaningful way. Uh, without really talking about the numbers, I would basically say that we will continue to invest in the right channels, uh, depending on which target audience are we, are we targeting, which, whether it's, it's metros or tier one, tier two, and uh, very high impact properties as well uh, going forward. So that, you know, we, we, we do not become a part of the chaos like I mentioned earlier, but at the same time, you know, reach out in, in the most impactful way to, to our consumers. Yeah. Music to our ears. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from the healthcare perspective, I think uh, last two years did provide a lot of tailwinds for the online healthcare space specifically uh, because uh, during COVID lockdown, you couldn't go out of your home to even consult a doctor for minor ailments. You were forced to figure out the online option of doing it. So the category, some of it automatically moved from offline to online. But if we look at the bigger pro problem as well as the opportunity, so the problem in India and specifically my colleague here mentioned the uh, the tier two and tier three and the rural India. Today in healthcare, quality healthcare in terms of availability and accessibility to good quality doctors or even uh, to doctors itself, itself doesn't exist. And healthcare, uh, mostly people understand by online medicine delivery. That ability to sort of consult doctors. Uh, we made a good start during COVID online. Uh, and we see continued traction happening uh, both in the metros as well as the tier two, tier three cities. And we have consistently chosen to spend in making consumers aware that there is an option where if she or he doesn't have access to a good doctor, it's as easy as logging onto a website or downloading an app, as easy as doing an online e-commerce transaction, as setting up an appointment and doing an on online consultation, whether it's phone or a video-based consultation with a doctor. And it is cheap and affordable. Uh, so bo on both these points, uh, creating awareness for the large masses of India that such a service is available, it is much cheaper, much convenient, building on to the overall objective of the government of India, which is Aishman Bharat, healthcare for all, making quality healthcare accessible to a billion Indian lives is the mission vision which we have as a company and we have been continue to invest in creating the basic awareness that such a service today is accessible, available to you. And for that, uh, in the beginning of the year, we, we roped in who else than Amitabh Bachchan as a celebrity endorser for Medivadi as a brand. Uh, because there are of course apprehensions other than few people uh, who are really very early adapters who are conversant on doing online doctor consultation or online uh, health check or medicine delivery, which is still relatively easy. Most of the people are apprehensive. They don't know if they will get a good doctor, what will be the quality of the consultation and all. So we also sort of wanted to build some trust 
and authority for us as a brand. We look roped in a celebrity uh, like Amitabh Bachchan, who already has this mass following on the hinterland, and who is someone who people look up to, uh, and did a high decibel campaign. In fact, two campaigns we did. And the tailwinds of COVID have also helped for our uh, brand as well as the industry. And we see continuously that people who have shifted from offline to online, by the way, offline still is 99%. Most of the people sitting in the room would still probably prefer if, they fall, if God forbid they fall sick, meet a doctor offline or go to a diagnostic center offline or walk to a hospital. Uh, so it's, that is still not the common behavior. Uh, so, so there are certain barriers like lack of trust, lack of belief that the doctor sitting online it can also give you the best consultation. So it's not an easy job for a marketer. It requires a ongoing reassurance uh, to generate trials, to create top of the mind, and through each service which you do, build the consumer trust. So while we continue to keep investing, I think festive season, as I sort of also look at it, there are certain uh, categories uh, within healthcare where people are more open to uh, doing what I would say discretionary healthcare uh, spends, which are sort of either making them look good, look better, or even for that matter, some kind of preventive uh, consultations, uh, which is including preventive annual health checkups, etc. because they know they will be enjoying with their loved ones during the festive season, and some kind of proactive health check gives them the assurance they can probably binge on the food, alcohol, or whatever they will do during the festive seasons. So we continue to invest also into the festive season with specific focus on targeted digital spends also, uh, which is uh, absolutely essential for a category like us because ours is a need-based category. Uh, we, we normally don't, don't want anyone of our consumers or lives which we touch to fall sick, but if they fall sick, we have to be available 24 by 7. Uh, and we, we have to communicate the accessibility, the convenience which we offer. And that's why during the festive season, we do more targeted digital spends uh, basis the demands which we see in the subcategories which I mentioned, like diabetes-related consultation, dermatology, weight management, and a few other preventive uh, health check-related uh, things which consumers are interested in. But overall, I do, do see a strong demand also going into the festive season. Uh, and I think it is also good to see most people, not only from the metro cities, but also from the tier one, tier two, also taking on this online consultation where they realize it's much, much cheaper also than doing it offline in, in lots of situations. So it provides value also. So fantastic. I'm getting a sense of always on and uh, really understanding what that need base is coming and requirements are coming in from your users and accordingly talking to them. Jitin, <laughs> are you spending lots of money? <laughs> So I, I think, you know, uh, I think brands will be conscious as the media agency said, <laughs> and I agree with him that uh, I think uh, the Pujo, the Onam is where, uh, you know, people will start getting warm up in terms of what is happening. I think the larger uh, challenge from a brand point of view is that there's a lot of convergence across media. So today, the, the OTT, the TV has almost become a sort of a single channel. So it's no more a digital plan versus a a TV plan versus a, you know, a conventional print plan. So today everything is becoming uh, seamless and uh, we can put attribution to it. Uh, I think from a brand point of view, content is extremely important and then where the media piece will uh, come in. Because as I told previously that there is a buoyancy. So it's not that uh, you are going to launch a brand in festive and people are going to buy you. So what you are trying to be is you are trying to be topical, you are trying to build a connect you're trying to take an emotional high ground so that the consumer keeps you in the concentration set. So for all this, the content plays a very important role. And there is a community, because you, have, you are an existing brand, there is a community which you are catering to. Now how do you, so a lot of brands try actually to reinforce to the same TG who's consuming them, because you generally don't acquire new customers during festive, but actually you increase their basket size uh, during festive. So your media plan uh, goes in a very different direction you know, vis-a-vis -vis trying to acquire uh, new users uh, through this particular thing. So 
So I feel brands are conscious. Uh, media will be seamless in terms of, and it will not be a, a, a medium-based uh, planning. It will be a convergence uh, piece which will take on. And then obviously the content is very, very critical. I think one thing which we need to keep in mind is that if you are spending X amount on the content and if you're not spending 4X or 3X on the media, that content doesn't reach the right audience and vice versa, that you've really cut on the content cost and put only the amount on the media, that also doesn't work because finally the content has to connect with the audience. So I think the balance of both is uh, very, very critical when you're doing the media planning. Yeah, thanks. So Nikhil, you'll have a different take on this. You're looking forward to those budgets. <laughs> I agree with everything Jitain said. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, I think Festive has been, it, it's been pretty decent for us. Um, nobody has gone home in the office for two weeks, so I'm very happy. <laughs> so, yeah, so again, optimistically cautious. Yeah? I think uh, spends have been higher than they've been for a long time. Uh, like Jitain said, we're going cross-media this time. Uh, it's not TV paint pack right? Uh, I don't think, uh, I don't think uh, people are looking at one avenue today. Uh, yeah, and like Jitain said, it's, my purchase funnel is just all over the place. It's not, you know, the three buckets and I'm going to go after one. Uh, awareness turns into trial immediately today. <laughs> yeah, so it's, yeah, it's all connected for this kind of omni-channel. If brands are not omni-channel, we're losing out. Uh, I think more and more of my brands are realizing that. Uh, everybody has a call to action where I can go to a D2C website and I will deliver it to your house. Yeah? And therefore, the role media plays kind of also changes. Yeah? Uh, like Jitain said, if I'm not talking to you through what influences you, I'm gonna get lost. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, and what influences you is different. It's cricket through impact, it's, uh, it's Shah Rukh Khan, it's Amitabh Bachchan, and it's uh, you know an influencer. Yeah? Yeah. So how do I spread my money across all of these places and therefore give you the best ROI? But uh, yeah, I think it's cautiously optimistic and this festival has been much better than we've had for maybe three or four years. Yeah. So the revival is definitely in the house, but um, cautious, um, very smart spending. And I think there's uh, really the innovation that's coming around it where each brand is looking at the need, looking at the objectives, looking at what users are asking for and then and uh, building solutioning and presence accordingly. Um, Mrs. Cyber, I have to ask you this. Um, jumping into do's and don'ts. Now, Medibuddy has, has seen many changes over the last two years. As you've rightly said, you all have moved from, you all are battling an offline to an online. You all are looking at um, a certain amount of building uh, your brand position, your services. Um, all in all, you all have changed the way uh, healthcare has been engaged and perceived. Um, so looking at not just healthcare, but all the brands that you've worked with in the past, I mean, you come with a great bag of experience. You've, you come across um, e-commerce, uh, consumer durables, um, OTT, there's, there's a mixed uh, set of brands. Um, what is that do's and don'ts list that you follow to maintain a certain sanctity for your brand and consumer experience? Oh, that's an interesting question, Haltia. I have to really think through it. Uh, okay, so I think if I were to just look at everything and try to sum it up in one word, I think it's, I think consumer centricity would be one thing. Uh, end of the day as a, business or as a marketeer, it all starts with a consumer. If you really understand what he or she wants or demands from or seeks, and you are able to sort of cater to those in the most effective way we win, I think that in, in, in my entire career journey, I have seen it remaining constant. It all starts with the consumer and how do you sort of build your product, service, value, offering, to cater to the consumer needs, whether it's e-commerce, OTT, uh, whether it's uh, the current healthcare business. Uh, fortunately, uh, in Medibody, when we started building the business, we always kept the needs of the consumer in the center. Uh, so we had built in processes where we listen to each and every consumer feedback. We measure each and every consumer metrics which we have built in. And uh, actually, I have a 38 
marketing metrics which I look in the morning every day and 19 of them have direct implication on the consumer so they are not business matrices they are consumer related matrices and I think we, we today have the luxury of capturing those matrices digitally earlier we didn't have I, I first saw it in Amazon earlier when I used to work for Amazon but I think now many people have that ability to, cra to track consumer metrics so it starts with the consumer and then you build a business around the consumer uh, specific to the question which Alti asked was uh, Medibody we have always built the brand consumer backwards we try to be consumer centric we try to keep listening to the consumers what uh, pain points they have while they using while they use our service and we proactively try to build solutions which increases the value for our consumer uh, we know and we know and uh, treat each of our consumers differently if it is a new consumer we ensure that the kind of messaging the kind of onboarding journey we we do for her or him is very different from a consumer who has been repeatedly using our platform uh, we address all the uh, pain points of a consumer and we have been doing it very programmatically over a period of time so that any friction he or she has uh, in terms of our services we can reduce. Uh, the big job here is to move, uh, uh, to provide a quality healthcare service to a billion Indian population and many of them don't have that today in a way which is affordable. So we need to sort of ensure that while doing so, we focus on things which matter to our consumer and cut the rest of the other things so that we, when we deliver that value, we are able to do that efficiently. Uh, so that's what we will continue to do uh, and that's always going to be the primary focus of the company uh, and that will ensure whether we win or are able to sort of build that vision of providing quality healthcare or not. Uh, in terms of don'ts, I think what is very important is never ignore your consumer even if it is anything which is of a minor pain minor irritation or a major escalation i think brand even if they become very large have to be very humble because it's the consumer whom to, to whom we are responsible we exist so that we can serve them and without him we are nothing so i think don'ts is never become arrogant as a brand, always listen to the consumer, always work uh, and, and don't ever uh, sort of underestimate uh, or ignore any consumer feedback in any medium and always use it to improve the quality of your product, brand or service you offer. Fantastic. I think uh, besides revival, I think the essence is the end consumer this year and uh, they're speaking loud enough and uh, if you're listening, I think we'll get all our theories right. Um, Nikhil, over to you. Um, you work very closely with e-com brands today. Um, we, we just touched on the topic of accessibility and uh, certain, uh, you know, the, the consumer being the heart of everything, a certain amount of affordability. Um, let's just look at Misho for a second, right? It went from a B2B to picking up an essential grocery module now contending with the B2C space. Um, I mean, there are players over there and, and, and how, but um, how, uh, I mean, if you're, how, what, how do you all deal as an agency for them uh, to build brand presence? Uh, if you're loud enough, how are you dealing with clutter? And if you're uh, not and sustained, how are you, you know, staying present? We're doing it really well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so okay. So, so for us with Misho, it was about finding uh, fi spaces for do for dominance, right? Whether that's within media or whether that's within my consumer's mind, right? Uh, and I think we spent a lot of time with the Misho team trying to identify those those moments. Let's let's call them that, right? Uh, it's it's like it's looking at your competition, what your competition is doing, and more importantly, what they're not doing, right? Mm -hmm. What is it that they're not talking? to with your consumers, right? So listening to your consumer became ex extremely important. Uh, and we found that window, right? Uh, all, of, all of us know who Misho is, right? <laughs> all of us know that we're competing against the largest e-commerce brand in the world, right? Uh, we're competing against the largest Indian e-commerce brand, and we're giving them a run for their money, right? 
So we did find those moments of dominance. Uh, I think everything we said today is a little relevant. Uh, we've been always on, right? Because my consumer is always in the market, right? Uh, and I think that's, that's critical. If we weren't always on, we wouldn't be where we are today, right? Uh, we took impact when, when it was necessary. We have not done more than maybe, I think, two large impact properties because, you know, do I really need to be in my consumer's face all the time? Uh, I think what we did from a digital perspective was also quite smart, right? Uh, it is identifying your audience, like everybody's saying, listening to who they are, and then delivering that message to them, right? We treated, I would say, we did a lot of what FMCG has been telling us to do, but, you know, a lot of these new age brands will come and say, I'm going to break the mold. No, you can't. Right? <laughs> it is, FMCG is FMCG for a reason, right? And I think we took a lot of, we implemented a lot of our learning from FMCG and as Mindshare, obviously, we know FMCG, right? Yeah, and uh, this is why Misho is where it is today, I would say. Uh, I would say it's also because the, the brand and the media team, uh, it was highly evolved, every conversation. Uh, every number we got back was debated, discussed. Uh, I think we've spent, and some of the team is here, we've spent five or six hours debating one week of data from Gujarat, trying to understand what went wrong, why did my VTR not go up, and again, listening to your consumer. So I would say this festival is touch wood, our sales started today. We're looking good, and we're looking good because we were always on, we found those windows of dominance, and we spoke to the consumer in the way that the consumer wanted to speak to us. Fantastic. Yeah. We're looking at a piece of that pie as well. <laughs> but when, I mean, fingers crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed, everything. Okay, brilliant. Going from this online world to an offline world. Jitin, you have some, ex you know, years of experience and some really good experience in the retail line. Um, I want to hear a little bit more about that. And um, as you know, like, if, if, like more of those opportunities you've seen as a marketeer and um, you know just worked with it with those must do strategies that you know you have to do and you win or you don't do and you lose <laughs> so i think you know as a marketeer we are always either spotting opportunity or surrounded with opportunities i think uh, one of the key learning which i had over the years is that there is a code of occasion you know so let's say uh, there is a festive happening or there is a friendship day or there is a Valentine day. There is a code which exists. There is a nuances which the occasion is already built on. Then there is a category in which you operate. There is a code of that category. And then you have the filter of the brand. Now, not every occasion is relevant for every category and not every brand can leverage that occasion. Now, that's very important. Sometime in this whole haste of being everywhere, you know, uh, there's a lot of, uh, I would say, dissonance which gets created with the brand because as Nikhil rightly said, it's not about being on the face every time. I think saliency is a past. I think this whole conversation that I reached, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, it's equivalent to an impression. It doesn't mean anything, you know, unless you're able to convert it back and lead it to your um, uh, brand or the product. So I think, uh, very critical for the marketeer is not to uh, try to, you know, just do anything and everything which is available. Like they say in cricket, you well played. I think in marketing it should be well left because that is very important that if you don't leave the opportunity which is not relevant, you might really, you know, put in a lot of energy on it and it will not mean anything to the brand. So that I think is a very uh, important thing. The other thing is that it is never about putting in more money or less money. It's about whether it is making sense to the brand, is it reinforcing what you stand for, just because it's easily available. So I, I came across this uh, proverb yesterday that uh, overnight success lasts for fortnight. So it's a very important thing that it's not about just being viral or just being topical and getting shared, but for the right reason and if you're able to sustain that, that's very critical because brand is like a, a individual or a journey of an individual. It needs a sustenance part of it. There is an impact, there is a hero movement, and there is sustenance. A lot of people get carried away with the hero movement without understanding what next. And that's where brands really uh, tumble down and you see a lot of big brands not existing around us. I think that's where 
the challenge is that you just thought about that moment went all out and uh, it doesn't make sense to you right now. So I would say that's my learning. Yeah, thanks. Fantastic. So remember to let go of those, those few opportunities that don't work. You get better ROI and returns. Playing a new card here or a, uh, a gaming card here. So traditionally the festivals have um, brought people together to celebrate, to, to, to feast, to, to play the most famous theme party. I personally was put around a table and I enjoyed it. I won little money, but I won. Um, how is this, um, how is this category dealing with it this year, post a uh, pandemic? So yeah, um, I, I, I belong to North, so I know how Teen Pati is really part of Diwali festival or celebrations. Um, pretty much we all used to get together and, and play offline per se, right? So that's why initially I said, you know, it, online gaming per se doesn't fit naturally, right? Um, Rami, which is our core product also, um, you know, it's very predominantly big in South and, and, and Western part of the country. Um, while it's, it's there during, during Diwali and all, but it really picks up uh, during Sankranti really. Uh, <clears throat> having said that, of course, yes, yes, it's, it's like in the, in the beginning I had said, you know, we need to alter that behavior and we're working towards that. How do I start being part of those celebrations uh, as an online gaming platform? And hence, you know, I, I got to be aware where, where customers are, which is basically the digital world. Yeah, um, I was part of the industry when, when the proliferation of smartphones happened and, and, and uh, you know, the data became, became very, very affordable. Uh, so, and hence there was a democratization of, of, of data and, and with the content explosion, I think pretty much if everyone is now right now glued onto their uh, smart screens, uh, which I can see in the audience as well. <laughs> Pay attention, everyone. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's understandable, right? Uh, so good thing is, is I think, uh, you know, uh, it's easier now to target very, very sharply. You know, based on the interest, based on the history, based on the uh, demographics, you, you can target very sharply, right? Uh, you can also, basically, this would mean you, it, it's better for you in terms of costs, ROIs, and instant delivery. You, I mean, you can wake up tomorrow and say, you know, what happened with my campaign yesterday, and let's tweak it or whatever. Uh, but this is something which everyone knows, right, here. Uh, it's, it's nothing new that I'm talking about. Uh, but I think what's, what's the downside here is because since there is this fear of missing out, and which Jitain also pointed out, you know, you need to leave out sometimes. Uh, certain things, which marketers don't. I mean, yeah, we all want to be part of that really cool property and, you know, how do we become a part of that and, you know, make our brand be, you know, make it visible. It's leading to a lot of clutter on, clutter on the smart screens, yeah, and, and in the minds of the consumers. Uh, you look at the smart screen today, you look, you, you, you're reading some news and suddenly you click on an ad because you thought that was uh, a side arrow to, towards the next page or whatever, but you actually clicked on the ad. Um, and hence, coming back to that point of, you know, what, what Sebel was talking about, you know, be very consumer-centric. And hence, you know, even, you know, as, as a publisher, I would say that, uh, you know, you should look at how do, we more, how do you become more consumer-centric because consumers should not get annoyed at, at, the end, at the end of the day. I'm spending money as an advertiser. Uh, consumers should feel, feel good about, about that ad and not get annoyed by it. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I said gaming is a... Is a, is a form of entertainment, um, and hence I compete for consumers' time versus OTT, versus news, versus sh social media. And it's, and it's not easy, especially during festive season. Um, and hence there are certain ways to kind of, you know, stand out if you have to kind of uh, do this, right? Um, one way is to kind of create a big property that people wait for every year, like the big sales that happen. Yeah, people actually postpone their purchase because they know something's going to come up, right? Um, second is to make something which can go viral, but you can't really predict that. You can try for sure. Um, third is innovative formats on on on, on digital world. Um, and fourth is you know the kind of message that you give. It has to be unique. It can't be the same as your competitors. Yeah. Um, and then this is where we actually did something very interesting this time, and we've been uh, you know talking about it uh, ever since we launched these campaigns. Uh, imagine I'm a gaming app and I, and I go to the customer and say, you know, hey, I have this really kick-ass game. Why don't you download this? But, but do not play so much. Take regular breaks. Set your limits. Yeah, so I'm, 
while I'm talking about my game, I'm also not telling them to you know continue to play forever. Yeah. Um, and hence, you know, that's that's what we call responsible gaming. Um, and of course, when Shah Rukh Khan talks about it, it lends a lot of credibility and weight to it. You know, as as a, as a as a as a company who's been in this skill-based card gaming or skill-based gaming uh, industry for the longest time, as a flag bearer, so to speak, uh, we have we are very committed to the cause of of responsible gaming. Uh, we we actually want people to actually follow this. That's why our product features have all of this in the app. They can actually go inside the app and set limits. And we, so whatever we talk about, we actually promise through our through our delivery as well. Um, and hence, obviously, it, it, it reinforces our strength, as our brand strength of you know being a very genuine, fair platform uh, for online gaming. Yeah. Digital world. I, I mean, we started this campaign on on on, on uh, actually uh, Hotstar with Asia Cup. We actually left TV out. Yeah, we said we don't want to do that, uh, and it's been very impressive in terms of you know fraction of the cost that we spent during IPL. We actually got good number of impressions. Yeah. Lastly, on you know, like I said, there are innovative formats. We actually, uh, and influencer campaigns are becoming very popular. Again, everyone is doing influencer campaigns. And again, how do you really stand out there, right? So we reached out to these micro-influencers. We, 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 we started this campaign about a week or 10 days back. Um, we asked them to kind of lend their art to our message. So, so this rap artist in Karnataka, uh, he actually sang for us and communicated the same message. Yeah, we got a pretty good response there. Likewise, uh, you know, some some comedian who was giving a comic comic twist to the overall message, right? and talking in their own language, vernacular language, and reaching out to to much larger audience. At the end of the day, I think you know this this digital advertising will have to move towards digital and social conversations more and more, and we'll have to stop this clutter as 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 marketers for sure. And, and that's, that's our responsibility. Thank you. Um, I think it's important to realize that um, responsible advertising is really imp is needed. Um, paying attention to what you're doing right and wrong is needed. Um, new formats, I mean, there's opportunity there alone. And um, which brings me to my question to you, Nikhil. Um, as an agency, you all are dealing with different brands, you all are well-rounded with every kind of category, with brands, um, and switching that thinking hat accordingly to the need of each category could be difficult. Uh, I think that you all have kind of got down, but uh, how do you keep up with the new formats and, and the platforms that users are engaging and kind of constantly throwing at you? Uh, stop. <laughs> Okay, uh, so if you look at our TOI and my report, right, this, this year, uh, next year, we're looking at digital actually being, or the digital spends in the market outweighing television, right? And with that, with that, it simply means that there are more avenues on digital to spend, yeah? Uh, and digital is not one medium, right? We keep saying, let's do digital. Time's up? No, no, you can. Hello, hello. <laughs> okay. Do I need to start again? You're missing on your valuable words, sir. <laughs> I said we do it well. <laughs> yeah. No, okay, so I'm saying uh, with our report, TYNY, the Group M report, right, we're seeing that digital is actually going to outspend television for the first time in Indian uh, media history. And if you look at the digital universe itself, it's super fragmented. Yeah, it is not one thing for one person, right? Uh, it is many things for one person, right? And therefore, if you look at the day in the life of, and we've all seen this in marketing presentations, it is super cluttered, right? It is not, it's, so there is brand clutter and then there is platform clutter. Uh, the way we approach it, to be honest, is with a little bit of, uh, we want to experiment, yeah? Uh, and it has to be a learning investment. And that's what at least we talk to brands about. Uh, the way they're responding to a certain brand doesn't mean they're going to respond to you in the same way, yeah? Uh, because the context of your brand and your product is different, right? And therefore, in where I talk to the person, and how I talk to them, and how they're going to receive it is completely different. Uh, the problems we face is brands want immediate action, right, without wanting to put money in and learn. Yeah? But it is a learning investment for us. And if you're not going to put that money in, you're missing out on your consumer. Yeah? Uh, and I, I would say, 
cautiously optimistic. <laughs> yeah, we like to, uh, yeah, but I would say this year, if, even if you look at where we've spent our money, uh, it's not the big two on digital, right? We're moving out a little bit. Nobody got fired investing in Google, yeah, from a media perspective. But uh, if you're looking to, know, to learn more about your consumer, I would say please experiment, right? There are a lot of platforms that, that are giving us great ROI, both in terms of, I would say, brand lift, click throughs, uh, true caller, one of them. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, I would say uh, if, look at it as a learning investment. Fantastic. Yeah. So we're running out of time, so I'm going to do a quick rapid one here. So looking at this year's season, what is that one word that comes to mind? Alive. 24 by 7. Lots of work. I think engage and reinforce your brand. Thank you for spending the money. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, no one said money. Yes, thank you too. Um, okay, and what is that one piece of advice you'd give? Uh, I would say don't chase your competition when it comes to uh, doing something as far as advertising or marketing is concerned. Chase your goals. And, and I keep telling this, you know, if, if competition does something, uh, there's definitely another way to do it. Just because they're doing it, don't think that that's the right way or the best way. Of course, respect it. But, but you will find another way. Yeah. I, would, I would reinforce, keep consumer at the center. Uh, think through the moments where he's likely to think about your service. And when you spend on advertising, try to own those moments. You know, I completely agree with uh, Guninder on don't uh, chase your competition because it's an endless uh, you know, journey. Uh, but I, I personally feel that if you are in a position where you can influence the category, try to grow the category because the moment the category grows and if you are the trigger to it, you will definitely benefit out of it. Instead of just looking inert and trying to take some share from the competition, uh, it doesn't help in the long run. Yeah. Talk to your consumer more often. Yeah, And I have a conversation, listen to what they're saying. If you talk to them once a year, nothing's going to happen. Always on, lots of money, and thank you. <laughs> so very quickly, um, can we open to questions? No. Yeah. <laughs> or drinks. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you, thank you very much, my panelists. It's been a pleasure, an absolute pleasure. Uh, like I said from the start, getting to know you all, getting to know what you all are up to, uh, how you all are thinking. It helps us as... Uh, at the other end, of, uh, other sides of the tables as publishers really make the effort to kind of work alongside y'all and be an extension of what y'all are. Um, thank you, audience. Um, it's been a pleasure and uh, yeah, y'all paid attention. <laughs> so, e you for okay, thank, thank you so, so much. much. And thank you, panelists, thank you so much. Can we have a photograph in the front? And meanwhile, I'll also ask Mr. Vidu Shankar, Assistant Vice President at Sales, the Hindu Group, to step on the dais and Thank them, thank all the panelists and Chip. <laughs>